You've joined us today for a series of election special programmes covering the European elections and we're here today to film in Parliament some of our leading Christian members of Parliament. Here I am today in uh, Parliament and uh, this is an interview with uh, Stephen Timms MP and also Shadow Minister for Employment. Uh, Stephen, it's a great pleasure to have you on this um, special programmes we're doing for the European elections. Um, as a leading Christian here in the um, British Parliament, what are some of the challenges and difficulties you face being a Christian? I think for all of us who are Christians in Parliament, it's our faith that shapes everything that we do, the way we think about the, the problems that we're grappling with. It's what motivates and inspires us. So I would really point to the, the motivation that comes from faith more than challenges. I think, of course, there are all of us face challenges but I think what's really important is putting what we believe in, into practice in our political work and that's what I and many of my colleagues are seeking to do. Um, you are currently the uh, Shadow Minister for Employment under the leadership of uh, Ed Miliband. How has the uh, Labour Party changed under his leadership in comparison to uh, Gordon Brown who was uh, Prime Minister and you also served as a, a Minister of State? Yes, I, I was a minister under Tony Blair, including uh, a period in the cabinet under Tony Blair and under uh, Gordon Brown as, as well. I think what's really changed is the economic backdrop. We've seen the huge uh, economic crisis, probably the worst since the 1930s, arguably worse than that in some respects. And that has dramatically changed the political landscape and it's changed our party's responses and, and our party's programme as a, a result. We're in the middle of a very serious cost of living crisis now. People have got worse off uh, since 2010. And so addressing that, uh, changing things for the better for very large numbers of people who are really struggling to make ends meet now, that's at the heart of our party's programme. And of course, that's very different to the sort of concerns we were grappling with 10 or 15 years ago. Um, here we are today discussing the uh, European parliamentary elections and many people would ask why bother to vote? Why are these elections so important and why do these elections matter? Well, if we are successfully going to deal with the cost of living crisis that so many people are now facing, we need Europe to be working together. We need in the UK to be working with the institutions of the European Union and with other European governments as well, working together to bring growth back into the European economy. And success in the UK does require success across the European Union. We need to be working with other governments as well as with the EU itself. That's really the central challenge that faces Europe over the next few years. There's got to be big reforms in the way the European Union works, very big changes, and a lot of them are going to be difficult to deliver, but they have to be delivered. Um, and central to our case is it would be absolutely the wrong thing to do to announce we were going to walk away from the European Union. We need to be changing it from the inside, changing it so that it works better for the UK and for Europe as a whole. And that's really the centre of the case that we're making in these European elections. And the role of the European Parliament, members of the European Parliament, is a, going to be a very important one in the next few years. Uh, and talking about uh, the European Union, since the last uh, European parliamentary elections in uh, 2009, we've seen the Lisbon Treaty ratified, commonly also known as uh, the European Constitution, uh, rebranded. Um, in the European Constitution, it states there is no room for God in there. Do you think that this is a damning indictment upon Europe to actually remove God from the centrepiece 
of Europe and European policy. Well, I, I don't think it states in the Constitution there is no room for God, but you're right, exactly. there, there, there wasn't a reference uh, included in the Constitution. Uh, my view is that this is actually a pretty minor matter. I don't think the content of the Constitution has very much effect on our everyday life. And actually, if you look around Britain at the moment, one of the really positive things that's happening is a bigger and bigger role for churches, church-based groups. I mean, most obviously with, with food banks, the extraordinary growth of church-based food banks over the last four or five years. A million people in the last 12 months have benefited in Britain from uh, help from a, a, one of the church-based food banks coordinated by the Trussell Trust. Now, that extent of Christian involvement in the life of our country we haven't seen for a very long time. I, I welcome it, and the fact that the European Constitution says or doesn't say something I don't think uh, is a, a very significant consideration. I think we should take a lot of encouragement from what's actually going on in communities up and down the UK. Um, as a, a leading uh, Christian MP here, in uh, Parliament. Um, did you find that David Cameron's comments that uh, Britain is a Christian country helpful to being uh, advocate Christian causes here in Britain? Well, I, 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 I certainly didn't take any exception to what David Cameron said, except, of course, you know, the, the reason he's saying it is not, I don't think, because he's had a dramatic change of heart from the kind of things he was saying before, but because he's recognised that his party has lost the support and trust of a lot of people who had high hopes of what a Conservative administration would do. He's trying to repair that damage with those comments. His party has lost a lot of support to the UK Independence Party, not least, in my view, because of the, the way it has handled some of these uh, issues. He's trying to repair the damage. I don't think it'll be a very successful effort, but I certainly wouldn't uh, disagree with the, uh, the, the points that he, uh, he made. I, I, I'm surprised, to be honest, that anyone really took exception to them. But some people do. There's been a lot of uh, discussions, uh, particularly through our, our mainstream media, on the whole issue of whether Britain should be a member of the uh, European Union or not. I know that David Cameron said that if uh, the Conservatives are re-elected, uh, he will offer the British people uh, the chance to have a referendum um, in 2017. Um, what's your party's position on Europe and will you give the British people uh, an opportunity to decide whether they want to remain as part of the EU? We think the central challenge facing the UK over the next few years is sorting out the deficit, getting people back into work, uh, securing growth again in the British economy, repairing the damage that the economic crisis has caused. We need to be part of Europe if we are to do that successfully. We think it would be a terrible mistake to spend the next five years arguing about whether Britain should be uh, in the European Union or not, when there is absolutely no doubt in terms of the national economic interest, we do need to be part of the European Union. Our trade with Europe is going to be absolutely central to whether or not we succeed in overcoming the, the crisis that we're in at the moment. Now, for us to walk away from making the rules about how that market works would it seems to be, to be a, a terrible mistake. Now, we have said that if there was to be a proposal for the transfer of uh, additional powers from the British Parliament to the European Union, then in that instance we would uh, ensure that there was a referendum before we accepted that proposal. But we're not expecting that over the next few years. And just as, you know, if you look at Scotland at the moment, where the whole of politics is really paralysed by the arguments about um, whether Scotland should be part of the United Kingdom, I don't think, I, and I, my view is that Scotland, uh, I hope, will remain an, in the United Kingdom. But equally, I don't want our politics in the UK as a whole to spend years over a rather fruitless argument about whether we should be in the European Union or not, when the national economic interest clearly demands that we should be. We should change the European Union. There's a lot of work to be done. But walking away, I, I think, would be a terrible mistake. 
Um, but are we not uh, reaching a time where we've seen uh, major, major shifts in power in terms of British sovereignty given to uh, European institutions, the European Commission? And, uh, you know, are we not moving closer and closer towards a federal Europe? And if that's the case, then isn't it up to the British people to decide, or even the people of Europe, whether this is a vision that they want to be participators? Well, I, I certainly don't want to be part of a federal Europe, and the Labour Party doesn't want to be part of it. But there are very big changes going on in the world. You know, a few years ago, we had the fourth biggest economy in the world here in the UK. In 2020, the estimate is we'll have the ninth biggest economy in the world. China, India, other uh, economies around the world growing very fast. And the question we need to ask ourselves is how can Britain prosper and succeed in this rapidly changing world. And I don't think the answer is to become isolationist. We've never been isolationist in the UK. We've always been part of and a leading player on the world stage. My view is we should continue to be uh, and that the uh, w one of the ways we should be doing that is by being influential in the European Union. The European Union, the single market, is the biggest market in the world. We should be part of that. Our trade is absolutely dependent on what happens elsewhere in Europe. And for us to say, as the UK economy is, as a, as a proportion of the world economy is, is shrinking, for us to say we're going to pull out of the big market that we are part of and that we've contributed to designing and building, that would be a terrible mistake. It would have a, a, an appalling effect on families up and down the UK. Dealing with the European Union is often difficult. I've been frustrated as a minister uh, in dealing with some of the bureaucracy in Europe. Dramatic change is needed, but pulling out, walking away, that's not the answer. It's never been how we've dealt with problems like this in, in Britain, and we shouldn't start now. Um, uh uh, Stephen, I just want to ask you questions relating to kind of foreign policy issues. Now, sadly, over the last 10 years, we've seen an incredible persecution of Christians, particularly uh, in the Middle East. Can I ask what the Labour Party is doing in particular to uh, safeguard religious freedom in the Middle East, but also here in Britain as well? Well, Douglas Alexander, the Shadow Foreign Secretary, has been vocal about this in recent months, and I very much welcome what he's said, making the point that the British government should be standing up for the, the, the rights, the safety of Christians who are being persecuted around the world, of whom, as you say, there are today a, a, a large number, not least in, in the Middle East. Douglas is speaking at a, a special meeting of the all-party uh, parliamentary group on religious freedom together um, in a meeting that's been put together with uh, Christians on the left of which I'm the chair. I very much welcome what he's saying and I do think the UK should be playing a leading role in protecting and defending the rights and the, the safety of Christians uh, facing persecution wherever they are in the world. That's excellent. And also in, in this country as well, um, many Christians feel like they've been marginalised from the uh, political process. We hear lots of stories about uh, British Airways workers not being able to wear a cross and this growing secularisation of British society, which seems to be coming into conflict with the Christian faith. Um, what's the Labour Party doing to secure um, freedom of belief in this country? Well, I, I think it's quite important to get these things in context. As far as I know, only one person uh, lost their job in, in British Airways and uh, ultimately uh, at, at Europe, actually, in the European uh, Court of Human Rights, found in favour of her quite rightly. That was an absurd decision by British Airways. And uh, we've, there's been a, a small number of cases, most of them, in my view, have been uh, quite wrongly handled by the employer. There should be no exception taken to people who, in the course of their work, feel it's right to express their Christian, uh, Christian faith. But as I say, I, I'd be much more positive about what we're seeing around the UK at the moment. If you look at what's happening in food banks, you look at what's happening in street pastors, I'm the Shadow Minister for Employment. Many of the best projects around the UK for helping unemployed people into work are being delivered today by churches. I think what we're seeing is a much bigger role, a much bigger space for Christians to 
serve their community, to be faithful to what they believe, and to be changing their communities as a result, changing them for the better. I think it's one of the most encouraging things that's, that's happened, uh, that's happening around the UK at, at the moment. And I think what you can see is uh, Christian faith is the source of exactly the values that we need to change Britain for the better. There aren't that many sources for those values if you look around our society today. The churches and members of churches are very clearly able to contribute those values. I think politicians increasingly can see that. And I think we should celebrate the fact that the influence and the role of churches and, and believers in Jesus Christ is one that's growing at the moment, not diminishing. Of course, there are people, as you rightly say, who are very upset about this and are very vocal in their criticism of it. But the truth is they're a tiny number. They make a lot of noise, but they're a tiny number. And the reality, in my view, is that those people, frankly, are on the wrong side of history. And do you, how would you encourage um, our, our Christian viewers to get involved in politics, not only by voting in these uh, important uh, European elections, but to actually get involved in the political process to try and make a, a difference in our society? I, I'd, like to, I'd like to see many more Christians doing that. I well understand why people hold back. They're worried that if they do, they're, what they believe will be compromised and they'll get themselves into very difficult situations. The truth is that by being actively involved, you can actually change things. Just by being there and your approach to political decision-making makes a difference and, and, and changes things for the better. So I'd certainly uh, encourage people to take the plunge, join a political party. All three of the major parties in the UK have uh, Christian organisations. I've mentioned Christians on the left, which I chair, which is affiliated to the Labour Party, the other parties have uh, uh, comparable organisations and actually they all, uh, they all work together. There is support available for people who want to uh, take that step and, and get involved and I hope many viewers of this uh, programme will, will do that. That's excellent. And uh, finally, um, Stephen, do you have a, a message for our viewers as to why they should vote for Labour f at these forthcoming um, European parliamentary elections? The central challenge facing the UK is dealing with the cost of living crisis, which is making things so difficult for so many people in, in Britain, in every community uh, in the UK today. We should be using the institutions of the European Union, our membership of the single market, together to tackle that crisis so that Europe can emerge from the crisis uh, and become more prosperous and uh, as well as continuing to be peaceful as thanks to the European Union, uh, thankfully, uh, Europe has been now for a very long time. So uh, our argument is let's use the institutions of the European Union to benefit us in the UK. And I, viewers to this programme who are, uh, agree about that, I hope will support Labour candidates in these elections because Labour members of the European Parliament have made, can make, will make in the future a very big difference to promoting the British interest in the European Union. Uh, Stephen uh, Timms, thank you so much for joining me thank on you. this uh, special election programme.